Hey guys, Jeff here with Passive Income Unlocked. So a question that comes up a lot is how do I avoid duplicate content? So this is one that I've seen over the years many times where people just say, you got to avoid duplicate content. You got to avoid duplicate content. Google is going to knock your site down and so on. Um, for one, I don't think it's too big of a deal if you have some duplicate content on your site. Um, I think that's probably been a little bit overblown. Basically what ends up happening is you're not going to be punished for it. You're just competing with yourself. So if you have two articles that kind of cover the same topics, um, they're kind of competing with each other. It's not so, something where Google's just saying, you got duplicate content on your site, so I'm going to penalize your site or something like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. But still, again, you don't really want to have two articles on your own site competing with each other. You want one that is clearly about topic A and one that is clearly about topic B. So this is something that um, we've actually been not great about up until maybe a year ago or so. Um, we actually have run into this issue ourselves where we have outsourced content or written content on, on each of our sites and then down the road wrote something else that was on a very similar topic that heavily overlapped with those other ones um, and we didn't even realize what we were doing until later on. Um, that's easy to do when you are producing hundreds of articles um, or thousands of articles within a year. And across our sites right now, I think we are somewhere over 4,000 articles, maybe 5,000. I can't remember, but we're somewhere in that range. So you do eventually start to lose track. And if you don't have a good system for it, um, you are definitely going to create duplicate content on your sites. So we did finally identify this about a year ago. And we figured out we need to, we need to figure out a plan for this going forward. So basically, we worked it into our workflow where we eliminate this problem pretty much altogether. So we go over this um, throughout our course, but basically now as part of our keyword research process, we identify each cluster on the site. So we're very thorough. So from day one, we have our niche. We identify all the topics, all the subtopics. Then within each one, we're going to select, okay, we're going to target this one first and this one and this one. And we find all of the keywords for each of those topics. Now we don't have to find all the keywords for the entire site on day one. I mean, we, we definitely do not do that. But whatever cluster we are going to go after, we find all the keywords that we will potentially target all at one time. So even if, even though that process is very time consuming, we're finding a bunch of keywords that we may never even target because they're too high in competition. We still find all of them, get them all um, down on paper, so to speak, digital paper, I should say. Um, we figure out what are the topics, what are the subtopics, group all those keywords together that are related. Um, any keywords that should be subtopics within a different topic, we group those together. And basically we take an entire cluster, build out exactly every single article that we would potentially write for that site or for that cluster, I should say. Then we just have it ready to go. And then from there, we're just picking and choosing which articles we're actually going to write or outsource. So we can just say, okay, I've got a list of 100, let's just say 100 to make it easy, 100 keywords or topics within a cluster on site A. And there's probably only about 30 of them that we want to outsource. That's probably enough to say, okay, we've got some good topical authority here. We're, we're producing a lot of content around this particular cluster, but we're not going after every single topic under the sun, right? But we'll take those 30, we'll have it on our keyword list. We'll take the other 70. We move it over to a different tab as part of that workbook and say, we will come back to these down the road if we want to, but whatever the case, we've already identified them. We're not going to do any more keyword research on this particular topic. That way we never create duplicate content on our site. So again, this is a process that works for us going forward. So basically every time we do the keyword research process um, on a topic that's already on one of our sites, what we do is we go through this entire process that I just mentioned, identify all the topics and subtopics. And then once we have that list built, we um, cross-reference it against the existing articles on our site. And we just do that within WordPress. Just go right into WordPress, uh, we use tags now, so if we are targeting a certain cluster, it's as simple as looking for all the um, articles that are tagged with a specific tag in WordPress, and now we have our whole list of articles on that topic, and we can just say, okay, we've already written these five, uh, or we've already covered these five topics, so we're going to take them off of our new list, and now instead of having 100 keywords to target over here, or 100 topics, we have 95. Then we go from there. Now we're avoiding that duplicate content going forward. So that's it for this one. I hope that helps some of you guys. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.